So we are out here at the RV today. We are doing a pretty big modification to the fifth wheel, one that a lot of people may have anticipated was going to happen. Anyways, you're going to like this video, so hang tight. What's going on, brother? How you doing, boss? Not Good. much, not much. So who do we got with us today? We got a helper. This is my son, Nico. What's going on, Nico? Nice to meet you. You ready to nice lift to heavy? Too. Yeah, I guess. All right, you're going to get a workout in today. Yeah, so, me and Albert, we're going to go grab a beer. Can you carry this and just move it to the front? <laughs> <laughs> so, what you're looking at, guys, is a Reese 20,000 pound rated goose box. So, this is going to be replacing the factory Lippert pin box on my fifth wheel. Basically, this is the pin box that comes on the Chaparral. Nothing special, it doesn't have any type of shock absorber or anything built into it. It's basically a rigid unit. King pins down here. I have this little friction plate that goes in between, kind of acts as a lubrication plate as well, so you don't have to put grease all over the hitch. This one's rated right at 15,500 pounds maximum gross vehicle weight. Now, we're gonna be pulling this off, and we are gonna be installing this beast. So this weighs about 175 pounds. This weighs about 75 pounds. So definitely need the help. We're gonna have the little man today hold this thing up while we put the bolts in and then we'll probably take a break. But let's get started with this. It's gonna be a fun install. So these are the tools we're gonna to be using. Sorry if there's any wind noise. I forgot my wind filter and it's a little breezy out today, but it shouldn't be too bad. Got my impact driver, got my drill. We are going to be using these grade eight bolts, which will hold the new hitch in place and replace the bolts that are currently on there. Then I have a couple adapters here to self tap the brake controller or breakaway switch back onto the side of the new, uh, new Reese goose box. Anyways, we're gonna get started removing the old one so we can throw this new one on. You on the bottom bolt or the top? I'm on bottom bolt. Okay. So this is the trailer breakaway brake controller. Basically this part gets yanked out if it ever disconnects from the trailer or from the truck and it engages the electronic brakes on the trailer. Gotta disconnect this to leave it hanging loose and then the other side of this. See if you can reach in there and grab that just so it frees it up. Okay, and then we also have another little screw down here. Okay, so got to remove this VIN plate that's on the side because it actually goes all the way through into the factory pin box. As I do this, all the way it'll be off. So I have the Lippert 1621 factory uh, pin box and I'm replacing it here. And it actually says that you should put the goose box on one position lower than the factory, which means on the wings here, we're gonna put it in these holes as opposed to these holes. Who knew that LCI makes tape measures? This was in the factory pin box, probably since it was at the factory and it still works. So basically we're gonna put, be putting this bolt and nut through the outside and then we have this conical washer that'll be going on the inside. I'm sorry, bolt and washer, conical washer with a nut on the outside like that. Once we put these in place, we can put all this stuff on later because these will be suspended. Right there. There's one up there. Okay. You got all that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we are putting the conical lock washer on the back side. Okay. 
they give you six bolts because there are some of these that can support up to six. Okay, so we got all the bolts, washers, lock washers, and nuts in place. Now we simply have to tighten them down. It says that all bolts need to be tightened to 210 foot-pounds. Got my trusty torque wrench here. And we are going to adjust this to 220 foot-pounds. Is it not popping? <laughs> Hold on, give me a second. There we go. Okay. Gotta give a big shout out to Team Hard Life for helping with this. Because if he wasn't here, this would have been a hard life. Ten. We need to just mount. The support bar for the seven way right here and then the brake breakaway which will go right here. Use a self-tapping screw for that. So this is an air valve right here to take off and it's a standard Schrader type connection which is that and it has an airbag under here. And the airbag is used to add some cushion to it, but also lift it just a hair. And there's gonna be a line here that appears whenever you fill the airbag to the correct pressure. So because I know the next thing everyone's gonna ask after putting this thing in is, do I need chains? And the answer is yes. I have safety chains that'll be going on. On the goose box right here, you can see the holes that they're designed to mount through. And that should just be a real simple process. Includes all the hardware, all the bolts, nuts, lock washers. And we're just gonna run it through the end of this, into that hole. So when upgrading to this, I'm not using my old uh, Kurt goose ball that I have. I got a Reese Elite. I have not greased it yet, but just to check measurements and everything, I don't think I need to. Basically, you're gonna drop it right here lift up on this it'll drop it all the way in and it's in place so now we're ready to hitch up the fifth wheel and take measurements on the clearance of the overhang of the fifth wheel and the bed rails on the side of the truck I'm gonna to try to stay above six inches if possible With the airbag inflated to 50 PSI, you can see a little line that appears. I think you can. Right there. Right there. But with that little line appearing means that the airbag's where it needs to be. I'm right at about 49, 50 PSI, which is as much as air as you want to put in there. The clearance at the front here is about five and a half inches. Towards the back, it's lower, but I am at a little bit of an incline here, so the back of the truck's a bit higher. Once I level out, it'll bring it down. Anyways, I think we're good right now. Um, everything looks like it'll be in good shape. It's got the safety chains right there. Um, I have the adapters that I haven't put in yet that'll go in these little side spots. And to release the trailer, you're simply gonna pull back on that lever and that little metal notch will go behind there and it will release the spring around the ball. You know, I want to give a big shout out to the folks at Rackham who provided me with this wheel lock because the Reese Goose Box does not have any type of locking adapter on it right now and I needed a way to secure the fifth wheel. Now I am going to work on some type of an adapter and the folks at CNS are actually possibly going to fabricate one for me to lock up the hitch on the front of the fifth wheel. But until then, this is Rackham's patented wheel lock system. This thing's really cool. So the way you work this is simply unlock it, 
separate the two halves. And then you take it, put it around your tire wheel assembly, and ratchet it shut. That's it. And it's secure. This thing has very, very good reviews on everyone who sells it and uses it because it's so simple to use. The only way you could really steal this without causing really, really crazy damage would be to remove the wheel, which of course would require you to lift up the whole back of the fifth wheel to do, or at least the, the side. So this is a pretty secure way of locking up your fifth wheel until I come up with a, a solution, to, of course, to uh, lock up the Reese Goose Box. Anyways, guys, I'm going to put the link to Rackham's website, the information on this, in the video description. So if you're interested in this or the Goose Box assembly, both of the links will be in the description. So guys, that wraps up the install of the Reese 20,000 pound goose box. This thing was super, super simple to install. I think I am going to end up dropping it down one additional hole. You can see the factory hole, the top hole is right here, and we did bring it down one spot. I don't really feel comfortable with the overhang cap clearance, so I plan on bringing it down to the final spot, which is one more spot. One thing that helped tremendously, though, is once we inflated the airbag, it raised the whole assembly up about an inch and a half. But the reason why I still want to drop it is, in case the airbag springs a leak or I have a valve problem, anything like that, I don't want this to drop down so low that it poses a hazard while towing. The chains were super easy to install. Um, and they're just a good safety measure, even though you may not need them in some states. I know goosenecks require chains everywhere, but in most states, because this is actually considered a fifth wheel box, you really don't need them. However, I just got them for extra safety measure. You can see the two shock absorbers here underneath the hitch, or at least the goose box. And then there is an airbag that's inside this portion right here, which is inflated using the valve on the side. It was a pretty simple install, right, Albert? Yeah didn't take too long. I mean, it's just heavy. This thing's super heavy, so you got to have a couple people to manhandle it in place. I heard somebody actually did it by himself, and I definitely wouldn't recommend that. I got to give a huge shout out to Albert. This guy right here was instrumental in helping me get this thing done. He is the owner of Team Hard Life and Hard Life Bait and Tackle here in Corpus Christi. He has his own channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Team Hard Life. I'll put the link in the video. Guys, give this guy support. He is a former member of the Marine Corps. He works his ass off. He is absolutely a great person to work with, and I can't thank him enough for his help. Anyways, man, I appreciate it again. I owe you lunch, and we'll be coming back to you guys soon. If you get a chance, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again.